Hello, I'm Mr. Johnston, and this is Biology. Welcome to Section 1.7, Levels of Organization. Uh, in this section, we're going to talk about once you have a cell, you know, once you have kind of the bare minimum, that many organisms are going to go above and beyond that, that we're going to have these additional levels of interaction amongst multiple cells and amongst multiple organisms. And so when we talk about things like, will you survive? Is this trait good? You really have to look at it uh, in the context of who else is around and how you interact with those things. So for starters, we have our cell, and our cell is going to be the bare minimum to be alive. So just having one cell means that you can be alive. Uh, so you can stop there. You don't have to go past it. Uh, bacteria, uh, many protists, some fungi, uh, they will all be single cell, and that's it. But for a lot of organisms, they're going to move on, and they're going to have tissues. And what tissues are is just going to be a group of cells that are essentially working together. Uh, so they're going to have kind of a, a common purpose, like muscle tissue, nervous tissue, uh, epithelial or skin tissue. And so by kind of connecting, if you will, in most cases, and then working with one another, they're able to do things that they couldn't do by themselves. Uh, your epithelial tissue, like skin, by lining up and forming these very, very, very tight, compact strings of cells, uh, that ultimately is what allows for us to have this barrier. So if viruses or bacteria try to get into our body, they can't. They're blocked by the skin. Uh, muscle tissue, by having strings of this contracting, this muscle tissue that can essentially shorten. Uh, by having long strings of this, your muscles can then tighten. If you can see, it's there, I promise. Uh, they can then tighten, and that allows you to shorten up the distance of that muscle tissue, which allows you to essentially pull one of your bones, in this case the forearm, uh, that I'm using as I flex the bicep, it'll pull the, por the forearm up towards your body. And so that's what lets you flex. And so these tissues are vital in multicellular organisms to let them accomplish things. But a single type of tissue is very limited. If you start to take multiple tissues, you can put them together and you can ultimately make an organ. And so an organ is going to be essentially the same idea as a tissue, whereas multiple cells with a common purpose, except now it's going to be multiple tissues. So if you see something like the stomach, the stomach has epithelial tissue, those kind of covering tissues, on the outside and on the very inside. And so those ones ultimately provide a barrier, and they'll also use secretions. They secrete acid and mucus. Uh, in between, kind of the middle layers of the stomach are going to be muscle tissue, which allows the stomach to do that contracting action, which mixes everything up and kind of helps pulverize it, uh, which is one of the first steps in digesting your food. So these all work together, in the case of the stomach here, uh, to help you digest. But your lungs do the same thing, your heart has the same basic idea. All of your organs are going to be these multiple tissues working together for that common purpose. Now if you take a bunch of organs and put them together with a common purpose, uh, you're going to get an organ system. And so if we take and we look at the esophagus, the mouth, uh, if we look at the, in many cases you'll include the intestines, the liver, uh, the pancreas, all the organs that either produce stuff that your digestive system will use and need, or where the food travels to get through your body, sort of from start to finish. That's all part of your digestive system. And so all together, those organs are capable of doing a task, which in this case is extracting all the energy they can from your food and getting rid of the waste at the end that was indigestible. That's your digestive system. You have the same thing with your respiratory system. Uh, you have the same thing with your excretory system. There's a variety of these organ systems that we have in our body that allow us to function because they all kind of do their own job or task working together, uh, the organs. And then the various organ systems all doing their job allows for an organism to live. And that organism is going to be us. It's an individual uh, organism, which in most cases an individual animal or plant or whatever. Uh, and in this case, we'd be talking about one that's multicellular. We would not be talking about one uh, that is going to be unicellular because otherwise it wouldn't have tissues, organs, organ systems, etc. Uh, so you can have where like, you know, the organ system, the digestive system is actually part of a mouse. The mouse would be our organism, a single mouse, single organism. 
Now, from there, you can get kind of interesting where we start to ramp it up because organisms aren't the end of the story. You're ultimately going to be able to have multiple individuals, multiple different organisms that work together. So we have something called a population. And what a population is going to be is a bunch of the same species. So you could have a bunch, in this case, the picture that I have shows a bunch of fish. So they have the same type of fish. So if I have a bunch of those same type of fish, same species, that's part of it, they need to ulti ultimately be in the same place so they can interbreed. And they need to be there at the same time so they can interbreed. You know, if you lived there 20 years earlier and died, you're not really part of that population right now. So if we've got the same species, same place, same time, that's pretty much our population. Those are the individuals that are capable of interacting with each other that are of the same type. And then from there, we can go to a community, which is going to be still the same place, same time. The only difference is this one's going to be all the, same, all the species that are in the same place at the same time. So this would include all the other types of fish, the plants, uh, invertebrates like starfish and shrimp, uh, all of those things that are alive in that same place at the same time are called the community. Sometimes they'll call it the biological community. If you, if you hear that, it's the same thing. And then you have the ecosystem, which is going to be what a community is. So it's basically a community plus the non-living stuff, or what we'll call the abiotic stuff. So this one includes the water, it includes the oxygen in the water, the CO2 that's being released, the ammonia that's in the urine the fish have. All of these things that are non-living, they're part of the ecosystem, but not part of the community. So community means all the living stuff in one place at one time. Ecosystem is going to be all the living and non-living stuff in one area at one time. We're not going to go too much into the biome, which is pretty much similar ecosystems. Uh, and the biosphere is just going to be everywhere on Earth where life exists. So it's basically going to be you know, this relatively thin strip of, say, probably five miles up. And maybe if you really go down into the ocean floor, you will have some bacteria that live in the rocks. So you might be able to go down at the deepest you know, six, seven, eight miles. So six, seven, eight miles down, several miles up, that's your biosphere. Everything that's going to be deeper than that, you get into the liquid mantle, so there's no life there. At least shouldn't be all of our guesses here. And if you get too far out, you're not going to get life as you get too close to space as far as we know. So that strip, uh, kind of a several miles up and down from regular land, if you will, that's going to be the biosphere going all across the Earth. So that's going to be kind of the bigger picture stuff where we're not just looking at an individual organism, but we're looking at how individual organisms interact with others of the same species population and with other species and their environment, which will be the community and the ecosystem idea. And then lastly is just to go over this idea of biodiversity. Because when we talk about organisms, there's a lot of differences amongst organisms. And we call all this diversity in organisms biodiversity. So bio's life, diversity means diversity, you know, having lots of different things that fall in that category. Uh, so we've got millions of species that are alive right now. And we've had tens of millions of species that have previously been alive uh, that have gone extinct or have evolved into something else. But amongst this, what I just want to quickly go over is we have several different groups when we talk about biodiversity. So we're not going to look at every last animal, but I want you to realize that when we do look at biodiversity, when we do look at the, the different species that we have and kind of the different ways of building an organism, if you will, the different structures, the different forms. Uh, there are six basic kingdoms is what we'll call them later on, but six kind of basic types of things you can be. The first two are prokaryotes, which means they're the simpler cells, no nucleus, uh, no real complex organelles, and those will be archaebacteria and bacteria. Now, archaeobacteria, these guys are named this way because they like to live in extreme conditions. They're likely very old, hence the archae, like archaic. Uh, so these may have been some of the very earliest uh, cells that we have. But these guys like extreme conditions. They're very, very simple. Once again, simple doesn't mean that they, they're bad. Uh, but they do generally tend to do like one job. You know, that they're very good at that one job they do. Uh, but being small, they don't typically try to do a whole lot. And then you have bacteria. These are the guys that we normally deal with that are prokaryotic. These are like the, the bacteria that you guys normally hear about that cause infections, that live on you, uh, the stuff that you'll find all over the place when they say, oh, use antiseptic wipes to kill that, or they talk about yogurt-containing probiotics. 
uh, they're talking about these guys, these bacteria. So they're the ones that help us, they're the ones that typically hurt us. And they're also prokaryotic, like the archaebacteria, uh, but these guys are a bit more diverse. There's many more of these than the archaebacteria. They're more common. Uh, and we'll find these guys have many roles throughout nature. These guys are very, very, very common, very, very, very prolific. Uh, I'm, I would wager pretty easily that they outnumber all of these other four guys that we talk about uh, in terms of raw numbers. Protists, these guys will be eukaryotic, so they have a nucleus, they have some of the more elaborate organelles, but these guys will be some of the simplest eukaryotes. So a lot of these guys are single-celled. Uh, some of them, like algae, will be multicellular, but they tend to be overall some of the simpler guys uh, that are going to be eukaryotic, where they have a nucleus, they've got more complex organelles. And they're very diverse. Some of them are very plant-like. Some of them are very animal-like, so some make their own food, some eat their food, some absorb their food like fungus where they secrete like enzymes that break stuff down and then they just absorb the liquid. So it's kind of like if you threw up your digestive enzymes on your food and then waited for it to uh, break down and then just kind of laid in it and absorbed it through your skin. Uh, so there's a lot of different diversity that's amongst protista. And then the last three types are all pretty straightforward. Fungus is some single-celled but usually multicellular organisms that will do like I just said where they excrete this digestive stuff and then they just absorb the nutrition after it's been digested outside of their body versus animals over here will be multicellular uh, and they're going to ingest their food so we eat or drink our food we bring it into our body and then we digest it and then plants these guys are going to be multicellular and they're going to be autotrophic so that means they make their own food so just like some of the protists, some bacteria and some archaebacteria can do this, uh, they can make their own food using sunlight and CO2 and water. Uh, so can some of the protists and bacteria. Some of the archaebacteria can actually do this using like sulfur and some kind of weird stuff uh, where they use chemicals instead of light. So it's pretty neat. But going through, you'll see that fungus, plants, and animals will tend to be multicellular. Some fungus won't be, but for the most part, they tend to be. Uh, some protists can be multicellular, but in general, most of these top guys in the row, archaebacteria, bacteria, and protists, most of these guys that you'll see uh, will likely be unicellular. So they'll be kind of the more basic guys, if you will. Uh, and so as we kind of add all these guys up together, we get, for the most part, life as we know it. It's just that there are thousands to millions of species within each of these groups. Hope you enjoyed this. That's it for the Levels of Organization. Have a good one.